Soon after he posted his 95 Theses in Wittenberg, Luther was summoned to appear in Rome to answer a charge of heresy. His friends were filled with dread. They knew the danger that threatened him in that city. People remembered John Huss a century before, how he had been promised a safe passage and fair treatment, but he had been burned at the stake. Elector Frederick of Saxony, one of the seven German princes, demanded that the trial be held within the boundaries of his territory. The Pope's legate was to hear the trial on his behalf. But before the trial could begin, the legate was charged to prosecute and constrain without delay and to banish, curse and excommunicate all of whatever rank in church or state who would not seize Luther and his adherents. Here is displayed the true spirit of Luther's foes, not a trace of justice to be found. It was around this time that a dear friend of Luther would come to his aid and support, Philip Melanchthon. He was younger than Luther and was a learned scholar. His carefulness, gentleness and exactness would serve as a complement to Luther's courage and energy. Augsburg had been set as the place of the trial, and whilst Luther was told not to attend by many of his friends who feared for his life, he was resolute about attending and made his way to Augsburg. At this point, Luther had not received an assurance of a safe passage, and his foes hoped that he would appear without one, but this he refused to do. The legate was at first very friendly in his exchanges with Luther, but he misjudged his determination and the strength of his convictions. Luther protested that he was being asked to retract without first being shown his error. Every response that he gave, he showed clearly how it could be backed up with the Bible. But the legate's response was always a heated response with the words retract, retract. Realizing that this exchange was futile, Luther asked to present his findings in writing, which he did the next day. He gave it to the legate and he threw them aside straight away. Luther then met this proud man on his own grounds, the traditions and teachings of the church, showing how his assumptions were wrong. The trial wasn't really going anywhere though, and Luther soon retreated with his friends. They had tried to bully Luther by their threats, but this had not worked. Luther's teachings and writings were spreading across Germany like wildfire and eventually Rome resorted to a bull of excommunication. Luther was condemned along with his adherents and they were given 60 days to either recant or be excommunicated. Normally this would strike fear into the heart of anyone but not Luther. He gathered around him a group of doctors, students and citizens of Wittenberg and under a tree near this very spot he publicly burned the Pope's bull of excommunication and the canon laws. Rome produced another bull of excommunication against him declaring his final separation from Rome saying he was a curse of heaven and condemning anyone who adhere to any of his doctrines. Truly it can be said of Luther, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you. While the forms of opposition to the truth change and how open they are over time, the same antagonism exists and will be manifested to God's people until the end of time. If you are being persecuted for the stands that you are holding and for the convictions that you have, I want to encourage you that no matter who you are, no matter where you are or what the situation is, stand boldly for God, stand courageously for God, no matter what the cost may be.